backseat without knockout. Do you know that one of the cars is on the Yes, to land this Mr. Fish. Walter Gretzky. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm still standing beside you. Hey, wow. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Just go ahead and pinch me. Go on now. Their craft has stayed in the 48-foot wooden schooners, the traditional kind. Hey, everybody. I'm Stephanie Beaumont. Welcome to CNBC. The show that celebrates all the people, places, and things that make the four Atlantic provinces so very special. From Nova Scotia to New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island to Newfoundland and Labrador, we take you to where the action is. And that's why we're in Halifax, Nova Scotia, on set with 22 Minutes. For 23 seasons now, this East Coast creation has been entertaining audiences across the nation. And over the course of the next half hour, we'll get you in on all the action. We'll chat with the stars. Go on. <laughs> oh, well, there's something wrong with you. And get the inside scoop on this mega award-winning series. And speaking of awards, our timing couldn't be better. As during the 2016 Canadian Screen Awards in March, this hour has 22 minutes, will receive the truly prestigious Academy Icon Award. And who can argue with that honor? With over two decades as one of Canada's best known and top rated comedy shows. Year after year, week after week, savagely satirizing national politics and world events. And just like their website warns, no story is off limits and no personality too big. And it's been that way from the get-go. When This Hour Has 22 Minutes premiered back in 1993, Canadian viewers tuned in and Canadian politicians took cover. It's important to note, four native Newfoundlanders held down the anchor desk when the show began. Kathy Jones, Mary Walsh, Rick Mercer, and Greg Toomey. There have been many changes over the years for sure, but 23 seasons later, and all four hosts once again hail from Newfoundland. St. John's own Greg Toomey remains a series staple, writing and regularly appearing, so it's wonderful to get his take on the comedic power of his home province. There has to be something intrinsic. If you I don't know what it is, maybe I think it's like because it's an oral culture, it's Irish, there's a lot of that talk, people like to talk. My parents were very quiet. I'm the youngest of seven, everybody else in the, in the family talked and talked. And I think that's one thing too, like Newfoundlanders often won't stop talking. You can't get a word in. I think that's part of it. <laughs> right. You know, I think. I think mom used to say about one of my brothers, he will talk his way out of a job. <laughs> you go into an interview and he'll talk so much. Right. Subconsciously, he didn't want to have the job, so he would just talk and talk and talk and talk and eventually convince the person that he shouldn't be hired. That's me! <laughs> you have... <laughs> Who needs therapy? Just Greg's mom. <laughs> Alright, very good. So now, let's just talk about this show, because it is uh, it current and it's constant. Yeah. And I, I just wonder, in terms of that, because uh, there's a whole bunch of people that get together and a whole bunch of wonderful ideas, how does it get to from there to what we see in the living room? It's crazy. It's a sentence. It's a crazy, <laughs> it's a crazy well-oiled process that's been, you know, honed for 23 years. So you start on the Tuesday meeting and there's like close to 90 or 100 ideas that are pitched. Is that true? Yeah. And like 40 make the book and then out of the 40 it's like it's honed down. What do you down. mean? Okay now just because 40 make the book. Uh, what does a, that a book mean? that we read on the Wednesday. Okay. So there's like 25, 30, 40 people that go into the room and all the writers pitch all their stuff and the actors write as well. So there's all that material out of the say 80 pieces that are submitted, 40 make the binder that people read through and out of that 40 sketches uh, you pick maybe 13 or 14 and out of that they'll be produced and then out of that it gets winnowed down to I don't know how yeah it's every cuckoo. week yeah yeah it's cuckoo but there's you know there's so many people around that are used to doing it right it's it's very um, smooth you know so it's like there's never any kind of panic there used to be we used to write right up until the end we'd be on the desk there'd be a live audience there <laughs> and people would make, be making corrections when the auto cue wasn't like instant it was like Bob Conrad was the floor director and he would have to correct it by hand no. on a big sheet of paper that would come across and like making changes right up to the end of that. So it's very different than that. Right. That was a little more panic. Now the book is ready sometimes Friday or Saturday. One of the things I love about the show is that it does blend everything from the live performance, from the stage, if you will, to the sketch tape. 
that's got to be great as a creator. I mean, you've done it all, really. I love, I love going down behind the audience on a Monday night and watching. Sometimes in the show, I'll be in the show in my underwear on Monday. Apparently, somebody wrote something here, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm looking forward to. That's I'm a lot trying to of find information. Sock, I'm trying to find sock gar garters. They're hard to find. But I often I get into the habit in the last couple of years of going down and watching the show live behind and watching all the people. It's, it's a treat. I really I love, uh, after all these years, I still love going watching the show. I love that what the cast does and uh, Sean and Mark and Susan and Kathy. But the, when they're live, the audience loves it and all that stuff. Usually when I was doing it, I would be kind of quiet, really holding it back or not talking so much or talking. But those guys kind of entertain while they're doing it and keep the audience up like that. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a magic. great end. Yeah. And you know there aren't very many of those shows around where you can go and sit and enjoy. It's very old timey. Yeah. In that way, in a good way. You know, I, I like. There's that. no laugh track. No, although right? I always thought that would be good. It would. Cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be good to have laugh tracks. Just sometimes, maybe no, for sir. my stuff. No. Maybe for my stuff. I thought it would be nice to have, just one time, have just an audience of mannequins <laughs> and just like the sliders up on the laugh, just like all the people coming and come on, come on already. We've done that, mannequins. Laugh track. It's never been done. No. <laughs> Season 24. Maybe next week I'll pitch that. <laughs> You're fired. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Still ahead on CNBC, we'll wander into wardrobe for the fashionable side of funny. We'll do our best not to double over during our entire interview with Mark Critch. And we'll sit down on set with Susan Kent. This is the first time we've caught up to you in your natural environment. I know. It's hey, true. movie sets and red carpets. That's here we right. Are at here home. we are at home. This is my house. I live here. I was evicted, and um, so now I sleep on this couch in the studio of 22 minutes. But I brought this along, so it always feels like home. Well, we weren't kidding. We've had the great pleasure of seeing Susan Kent out and about before the CCMA Awards last September, and on the set of her romantic comedy *Relative Happiness* a couple years back. Just last fall, we caught up with Kathy Jones on the set of her movie, 1970-something, and we've met up with our man Mark Critch on so many marvelous occasions, including the red carpet gala screening of his award-winning film, The Grand Seduction. To be sure, only one 22-minute star has managed to elude our CNBC cameras. That is, until now. Five, almost, almost six. I have been waiting to get this guy on camera. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Sean Majumner. How are you? It's ya? the legendary Stephanie Bowman. Oh, whatever. I'm not even joking, man. I'm it's so exciting to talk to you because no. we've, we've, we've bonded over the uh, World Wide Web many, many, many times. There is a pending restraining order. <laughs> on me. No, no. Yes, no, no. on me. On I, me. I have You've been a supporter you, of everything. Shelby. I, I mean, yep. you're on there. And Jazzy now. Jazzy My dog, Jazzy. Jazzy. You can pan down to see. This is, uh, she's the real star. Come here. Jazzy. Oh, Jazzy. Watch this. Jazzy. Look at that. She thinks she has sausages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Impressive. Well, see, everybody knows Jazzy because of the Manor. That's right. right? That's Superstar. right. That's right. She's done very well on that. She goes out. She can't walk five feet without people being like, yeah. oh, my God. What's it like working with Sean? I hear he's a real jerk. And uh, she always just stares at her, uh, stares at them and does a, a stand up and a spin around. And they go, wow, so Sean is move. very nice. Yeah. Well, not only is Sean very nice, but he's crazy talented and always busy. Besides his roles as co-host and writer on 22 Minutes, there's his stand-up comedy touring, his Majumder Manor project, and his dramatic work, too, in TV shows like Detroit 187, The Firm, and just last year, Breed. People are always like, so... Uh you know, have you made it? Uh, what does it mean to make it? You know, that's always the question, have you made it? And I've always been like, there is no such thing as making it. You just got to keep working. Like right. if you're working and you're putting your energy out there. You hustle. And you got to hustle. Yeah. You got to be active in, in creating more opportunities for yourself and, and for, uh, you know, people around you. And I try to work really hard at doing that. And I don't have one love for one thing only. And that's why you see, like you say, right. oh, you've got your stand-up and your dramatic stuff. And then here we are in Skitchville doing the greatest show in Canada, 22 Minutes. Yeah. And Majumder Manor, uh, you know, an uh, uh, unscripted kind of documentary series. Uh, so great. Though. And so we're trying to do everything, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's not just a show. That that actually is a real project that we right. want to continue. 
where are you in it? Because I know, like, I'm excited about the gathering. You've got yes. that all lined up again. Now gathering is coming back again August 25th to the 27th. No artists have been uh, locked or, uh, you know, named or anything yet, but we're, we're, we're we'll working on posted. it. We'll keep That's right. Uh, if only there was a media outlet that might be able to help promote it. For sure, you can find the latest details surrounding the gathering 2016 set to run August 25th through 27th on CNBC.com or by all means, check out their official site at thegatheringburlington.com. We'll have more with Mr. Majumder in just a bit, but up next, the newest cast member to grab the coveted 22 Minutes co-host spot, Corner Brook's own chameleon of comedy, Susan Kent. And as we discover, landing the gig was a bit of an inside job. A couple of weeks before I started here I was already here as a writer and they they called up to my desk and said come down to get a f wardrobe fitting no way yeah 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 and my heart was, I was like oh my god was that god. your end game Susan Kent um I think, was always terrified of this show mm -hmm. I used to mm -hmm, yeah I used to actually watch the show and go I don't know how they do it and the th and you know when you wa you see somebody do something and you go I could never do that like you, it was like watching an Olympian or something and going like I, I how do they do it how do they like bum rush politicians how do they how can they do so many characters how like the turnover is so fast yes. and how do they always find the funny in things and and so that's how I felt so I I never I'd never attempted to be part of this show okay. and when they did they did a call for um, a comic actors and comedians and I wasn't even in town but I would worked with Mary Walsh before and I think because I had I got thrown into the mix or maybe she had said or someone had said just because I was someone who I like I'd worked with everybody right. so they knew me so You're I think that yeah so I think that maybe is how it happened because it was never something that I was going for because it just seemed way too daunting for me like you'd have to be way smarter you'd have to be way better you'd have Come to be on. way faster all you know you that's just that's just how how I felt and so and then I and then I came in and um, yeah everybody was super cool and then it's just now it's four years later, which is I mean, crazy. but it went by in a blink, right? Yeah, it really, yeah. it really did. Even and the weeks do. Yeah, all the characters you play. I mean, you're playing the prime minister I now, know. for the I, love of God. I know. Hey? I know. It's oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know how. I mean, it was before he was the prime minister. We were like, who's gonna play him? Yeah, who's gonna play him? And so I and I did. And if elected, I will uphold it until I scrap it. He's kind of difficult. Like he's he's a really a, he's really an amazing guy and god, I hope he doesn't get mad that I play him. I don't know. He probably <laughs> doesn't. I think he probably has a good sense of humor about things. I think things, he does just given what he's done on the show. Right? I know. Yeah, he's always been a friend of the show. Yeah. yeah. And then I played his wife last week, so feel the city breaking and everybody's shaking you be staying in love. Stay in love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time to take our first break here on CNBC, but when we return, we'll turn our attention to the talents behind the 22 Minutes cameras. We'll give you a chance to score a TV Free Stuff prize pack filled with 22 Minutes gear, and we'll sit down for a chat with the one and only Kathy Jones. And they're casting for a new Bachelorette. Hey, yes. You know that. Would you ever do a show like that, Kathy? That's a little. What well, did you see our sketch last week where Mrs. he was liking Mrs. Enid and all the other Bachelorettes were like, <laughs> whatever, Mrs. Enid, she said, Eat it, and I go coming through. Hold my purse. <laughs> oh my God! I thought that was really funny. You're watching TV One, your community station. Welcome back to this special edition of CNBC. We're on set with the amazing team behind the mega award-winning CBC series. This hour has 22 minutes. Over 70 cast and crew members pool their creative talents to deliver the weekly show. Produced segments are presented along with live portions before a studio audience every Monday night here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Well, being here for a 22 minutes taping is the coolest, but I gotta say, being on set today is the best. Watch every member of the team working their magic to make it all happen. Just check out the set that they've created. It's exactly like an airport, right? And that's just for one sketch in one episode that's likely to have as many as six sketches. To be sure, this soundstage is constantly flipping to provide the perfect backdrop. Perfect time for a little creative math. 
So there's been 23 seasons of 22 minutes, which works out to about 414 shows, but we'll round that down for simplicity. So let's say 400 episodes. Each of those episodes has six sketches, which translates roughly into about 20 costumes per show. That's 8,000 visits to the makeup and hair room that's chock-a-block full of prosthetics and wigs and whatnot. And it's no wonder their wardrobe department looks like this. A lot of this is a collection that's been collected over 20 years, and you know. That's just it. But just when you think you have absolutely one of everything, something right. comes up and you need that, you know. So we do we do it all. We try to have it on hand, but if we don't, then we go out and we get it. Okay, and, and literally, I want to just say this. It's not <laughs> like you've got weeks to make it happen. Uh, no, generally, <laughs> we, d we find out what we're shooting on late on Wednesday evening, and we start shooting early on Thursday morning so uh, we have to have a fair good stock you know we also have another room I have another whole room full of things downstairs oh yes now see I'm imagining and I could be getting this vibe wrong completely but you like to shop are you I always do. Looking? Do you always, when you're out there, go, that would be good for such and such? Or? Of course, you can't help it. And I'll do I'll do the occasional sort of sprees. I'll go around the uh, province and look at the Frenchies and uh, see if I can come up with any treasures there, you know, and see something that would, uh, would spark my interest or that I think, that's so weird, we're definitely going to use that at some point in life. Right. 22 minutes hair and makeup and wardrobe too. That's the trifecta of special forces behind all those funny sketches. And speaking of sketches... This is Mike Allison. He writes every word that the characters say on 22 minutes. How do you do that? some of the words that they say. Um... <laughs> to be fair, Mike is one member of the tremendously talented team of writers that delivers the hilariously funny and totally topical 22 minutes we've been enjoying for the past 23 seasons. Naturally, when you're that close to it, you're bound to have a few favorite sketches. I mean, Mrs. Enid is a classic. She's really funny. She's very wise. She always has, she knows just what to say. She's, yeah, that's a great recurring sketch. There have been some, some favorite sketches, like uh, Bob Kerr, one of the guys upstairs, uh, writes these David Blaine sketches. We've done a few of them, and, and Sean plays a really funny David Blaine. There was one sketch that kind of comes to mind where there was a, it was a nursing home where this, this cat kept, uh, like, climbing on people's beds when they were going to die and and so they were interviewing the nurse that was talking about why like why the cat was there but it, and then in the background you see that the cat is actually killing all these old people like it's pulling the plug on them I remember. or it's trying to strangle them I think oh, that was a really funny sort of a visual sketch yeah. yeah I'm afraid we'll have to talk quietly Mr. Lassiter doesn't have long and you know that because of Oscar this cat has accurately predicted over 50 deaths it really is amazing how do you think he predicts when it's someone's time? The doctors feel he detects an odor people give off as their cells die off in large numbers. Others feel that he simply reads the signals that people are giving off as they slip away. As for me, I have no idea how he does it. Here's the other side of it. Because this cast, I mean, you look at them and yes, they're funny, but everybody else has other things going on. Kathy has the theater, uh, Sean has the dramatic work mm -hmm. he does, and you're a singer, Mike. Yeah, I, that's where I came from. I did like some, uh, was a kind of a singer songwriter, uh, amateurish. Still doing it? No, not really, no. Uh, and then I was at a little bit of musical theater as well. So uh, yeah, I try to sneak that in. And Mark Critch uh, found out that I knew a little bit and could play the guitar. So whenever he writes a parody kind of song, often he'll get me to help him out or I'll, you know. So every once in a while, I'm even standing next to him with a guitar just kind of as a sidekick. But it's, it, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The cat came back the very next day. My Arctic cat came back. I thought the tank was empty, but the cat came back. It just wouldn't stay away. You're like a, a multiple threat. I guess. I mean, you kind of have to be. And you wouldn't know it to look at him. No, you wouldn't know that I was talented at all to no, look at no. me. No, <laughs> no. Thre threatening is what I mean. No, threatening. This is awkward. <laughs> Still ahead on CNBC, we'll meet up and make Master of Disguise Mark Critch explain his latest look. And we'll give you a chance to score a truly cool 22 Minutes TV Free Stuff prize pack. Now I'm here to tell you, there's no I in 22 minutes. W what I mean to say, and what I've been told by everyone during our visit, is that this show is a team effort. And so yes, it does take a village to raise a show, but by that same token, every kingdom has its king. W what I mean to say is, 
queen. And she's as humble as she is hilarious, but Kathy Jones's contributions to the 23 seasons of 22 Minutes must be acknowledged and celebrated for sure. It's always so awesome to have Ms. Jones make time for us and give us a little insight into where she finds her funny. Aren't you running well, I, around you know going, what? oh my God, that would be a riot. I, 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 yeah, I do and I don't, but you know, recently, the other night, uh, John, Sean does this new material only thing at the at the Carlton, yes. and I actually wrote a ton of stuff down and uh, tried it because I got the comedy festival coming up, and I've also got this thing cracking up the Capitol with Mary, Mary and See, Susan. Again, this goes to my theory that you don't stop, even though you don't believe uh, that you stop. Yes, you think I don't stop. Yeah. That's true. But every time I talk to you, you're like, I'm doing Life this. Life is I'm getting this. more like that. Is it? You're right. There is a quality of like, you know, I was trying to just, you know, hang out and then I realized, wait a minute, you know, who knows what's going to happen to 22? I got, you know, the rubber's going to hit the road one of these days, Kathy, you're going to have to work for a living. Come on. I've just been shagging around. No. Well, that's hardly the case between her live theater work and her stand-up performances, not to mention her movie projects and this weekly series, That Lady is Busy. And for the record, we can confidently confirm 22 Minutes will be back in its Tuesday night time slot this September for its 24th smash season. I should salute you, really, because I'm you're... still here. Well, no, it's not just that. You're getting this Canadian go. icon. Oh, work. we are. I mean, yeah, Mary's getting one at cracking up the Capitol just for, you know, because she's the wild thing and she's awesome. Uh, but, the show but we are, the show is, like is the show is going to get, they got to give us a something. National treasure, that's now you've slipped yes. into that category, yes. right? Yes, yes. Well, sometimes when my, my, my daughter <laughs> me off and we're in an argument, I say, I'm a national treasure. I'm a national treasure. You are. You don't <laughs> the national treasure. You don't tell a national treasure she shouldn't say, you know, that she has to use her signal lights. Of all of the things you've done, of all of the sketches you've seen, and you don't even have had to have no, been in them. No. What would have been your favorite, or is there one? In, or in two? this show? Well, yeah, just in terms of a body. Do you go? Well, oh, you know, my, my favorite thing that. was this year. Actually, we had fun. Mary, yeah, Susan, Greg, to me, yeah. Meredith, Sean, and Critch, and me all played no. the quints. And that was oh really fun. And then it was a, it was a beautiful picture if you can get hold of it. And the seven of us. As the quince, and it's so nice. And I asked John to send it to me so I could make it to a Christmas card, but I didn't get it together. Christmas comes very quickly. Oh, like a blink, and it's gone. I still I have my decorations. So I have my lights outside. Do you? Me and my neighbor agreed. It's okay. Well, I think I'm just going to leave them up and then They'll just not up. invite over anyone till well, mid-November. And then they'll exactly. Be like, oh God, You've got it together. It, right? So together. But you know what? I, I, I am going to start shopping for Christmas right now. Uh, I just went out and spent so much money and then miss five important presents you know what i mean oh god i have add i had to hire somebody to help me make my list i couldn't oh i couldn't pull my you mind were together. busy I, I have a lot mary uh, my friend don says kathy at this age we have a lot in our files <laughs> So when someone says his name begins with P, we have a lot of P, peppermint, peppermint, you know, we have to go through a lot. So it's not that we're losing it, Kathy. It's that we have a lot. That's what it is. We have a lot. So anyway, my favorite thing, too, is also like this moment. I love this crazy moment. I love talking to you. That's the best sketch I've ever done. I'll pay you later. Ah, she's the best and such a big part of this Atlantic Canadian success story. Not only is 22 Minutes a hit on the small screen, it's huge on social media too. Kathy Jones got a chance to combine her flexibility and her funny and angry yoga, a piece that's been viewed well over 13 million times online. Another piece that's racked up the views, especially here in Atlantic Canada, is one that includes Newfoundland star power. Former Premier Danny Williams had just announced he was stepping down, and they met with Gordon Pinson for his permission. Did you get the oil? Yes, Godfather. Did you get Lower Churchill? Yes, Godfather. Did you throw a tantrum like a huge baby every time you didn't get your way? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. Well, then, the power invested in me as Supreme Newfoundlander and Canadian icon Gordon Pinson. I release you. I got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Everybody dies. 
Alan Hocko and Sean McGinley with their Republica Doyle cameo was a cool one for sure. And now you know what else is cool? Free stuff. And we've got a very cool 22 minutes prize pack up for grabs if you can follow the connection. Here it goes. Now you probably know if you're a fan of the show that all four 22 minute anchors have appeared as guest characters on Republic of Doyle. Kathy Jones played a grieving widow Janet Chafe in season one. Susan Kent played a jealous maid of honor in season two. Mark Critch made a series debut as Ned Bishop in season one and returned for season three, staying on as a reoccurring character, even tending bar by the end of it. And Sean Majumder, well, he first appeared on Republic of Doyle's premiere as the falsely accused Benny Natchi. So there you have it. All four have been on the show, but only one of the 22 Minutes anchors can claim series star Martha Bernard as their niece. So you'll score that 22 Minutes tote, t-shirt, keychain, button, luggage tag, and hat if you can tell us which one of the four 22 Minute anchors can claim Martha Bernard as their niece. Once you know it, hit the website at cnbc.com, click on the TV Free Stuff button, and submit your answer. Good luck to you, and we'll be right back with more of our 22 Minutes on set special you're watching tv one your community station this episode of cnbc tv is brought to you in part by the algonquin resort retreat to historic charm in this legendary seaside setting luxuriously reimagined for your year-round enjoyment elegant guest rooms contemporary dining indoor and outdoor pools water slide a pampering spa private beach and more the algonquin resort in st andrews by the sea new brunswick book your getaway today at algonquinresort.com you know what? You're the only person who cares about me. Everybody else, all they want to do is they're like, what's wrong with you? They're like, woo! Woo! Can I do And then I have to do the dance, right? When I win. It's an honor to be a part of this it? show. It always has been, you know? And, yeah. and they should... It's funny because they probably got an Icon Award like, you know, 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, they're that... But, the, but, but think about it now. Like, it's 23 years old. So, so you talk about 10 years ago, the show was already on the air for 13 years. 13 years is a long time on TV. So, so being 23 years old, um, yeah, I just, it should go on forever. This show should go on forever. Well, we couldn't agree more, and we'd stay here and watch it forever if we could. But our time on the 22-minute set is drawing to a close. Good thing there's time enough to catch up and congratulate the always awesome, award-winning and entertaining Mr. Mark Critch. This is a huge, huge honor that will mm -hmm. be bestowed upon you. Oh, the icon. The yes. Well, it's not on me. It's it's on the show. It's 23 years. The show but is a thing. you're part of this. Oh, well, it's gone beyond... No one person is Air Canada. No one person is Tim Hortons. No one person is uh, the, our government. One, no one person is 22 Minutes. No group of people is 22 Minutes. But you minutes. are part of that picture. I'm a part of it in the same yes. way, you know, a, a baggage handler is Air Canada. But you can't get mad at the baggage handler. When but you have. Oh, I'm very horrible to baggage handlers. <laughs> as a, That's why I, I go carry on now because... <laughs> They're very upset with me, the Let's union. Let's talk about this now that you've brought it up. Mm -hmm. You travel everywhere. I See, do, yeah. now we shoot here in Halifax, and uh, an incredible crew, mm -hmm. but then you go on the road. Yes, You're yeah. constantly in Ottawa. Yeah. You're like a member of parliament now yourself, yeah. are you not? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah, I've got my pin. Uh, I've been up there longer than some of the MPs now. So yeah. it's so funny, I, I was just up with the our new uh, defense minister, Minister Sajjan, and I was actually answering questions for him. Like, he was like, oh, where do I go to do this? I'm like, oh, yeah, you gotta go down here and all this stuff. No and I'm realizing, way. well, I've been... I've been page. The clowns know more than the MPs now. That's a, that's a horrible thing. Clearly that's not your hair. What's happening now? I'm playing uh, an Irish person, so uh, they gave me red hair because, uh, well, racist, I suppose, when you think <laughs> about it. There's all kinds of hair in, in Ireland, right. uh, but it's not just the red. So, But we're, we're staying safe. It's a salute safe. to the gingers. It is. Is it's, it? Um, yeah, I'm also hoping that they make a, a life story of Brendan Gleeson, and I get to pay, play young Brendan when he was still a teacher. You would be good at that. Well, he was still a teacher when he was my age, so there's hope yet. Right, and you guys are pals. Let's yeah. not forget. Brandon, do, yeah. Do you keep in touch now? I, I was just emailing him then. Yes, it's very interesting talking to Brendan uh, because um, no matter what he so does talks about, uh, whether he's very happy or very sad, he sort of talks the same way. So he might say, oh, I just won the lotto. It's wonderful. Uh, this would solve a lot of problems for me. Or he may say, I can't believe those burglars burgled my parents' house. 
I'm outraged. Or you might say, I'm in love with you. I, I, I tell you for, for once in my life, I'm, I'm in love with you. Or you might say, get out of my house. You've betrayed me for the last time. And so it's hard to tell if he's... Right. There's no tone. Yeah. I have to thank you. One more thing, and that's that you waved to me from the road and gave me a high five to salute. Because you're a huge part of CNBC and Mark Critch. I don't know if you know that. Oh, well, I'm like, I'm no. in the stalker category. Just, no, just no, shy no. CNBC stalker. is great because it's where we go to see and be seen. And I know that Alan Doyle uh, and Alan Hocko will often sit there and Mark O'Brien and just bask Mark O'Brien. Yeah. I love Mark O'Brien. They'll just look at old CNBC and footage of themselves, go, look, aren't I wonderful? And you be, it might be going through an airport and about to get on a flight and run to Hocko. Be like, come here, come here for a second. Come here, look, look, look. Look. Stop. Look at this. Look, there's me and Stephanie O'Brien. Look. Uh, uh, Stephanie O'Brien, Stephanie Beaumont, and, and look here we that's are. That's my dreams. And look, that, that's us. And, and look, 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 we're walking down there together. Look, look, she tell me how handsome I am. Look at that. I just wanted to. You go on now, and that's it. That happens all the time. Now you can watch CNBC and all the other great TV One programming anytime you want. Simply click the On Demand button on your Bell Alliant Fiber Op TV remote and follow the steps on your screen. And be sure to visit CNBC.com where you'll find our extended interviews with the 22 Minutes cast and a ton of other exclusive and fun features. We'll leave you now with a smidge more from 22 Minutes legend Greg Toomey and we'll see you next time on CNBC TV. You've seen it all. I mean, you've been here from the, the beginning. beginning. Day one. Right? Day one. <laughs> you, the stories you could tell. And I will. The books you I will write, write a book. Are you? I think I'm going to write a book. Now, seriously, we need to go viral. <laughs> so this is it. Breaking. I think that would be good to have the my take, because I was there in the beginning. And I, I, I was trusted, too, because I never gossiped. I never told tales out of school. So people would tell me stuff. And I was around from this day is it one. Now? And we're into about show 500, 600, whatever it is, 23 years later. Lost track. I know some stuff.